Do you want to know the best questions to ask when you're dealing with a dermatological problem? Well, if you watch this video till the end, I'm going to go over my questions that I've always asked in a dermatology consult. And if you get these right, quite often you're pretty close to a diagnosis before you even look at the animal properly. For the best veterinary tips, subscribe to this channel. And if you want to get notifications, click on the bell. And uh, of course, if you like the, the videos, please leave us a like as well. Hello, I'm Anthony Chadwick. I qualified 30 years ago and did my Dermatology Royal College certificates oh, about 25 years ago. Uh, but I'm also the founder of the Webinar Vet and currently the CEO of Simply Vets, a payroll and recruitment agency. Obviously, signalment is always important. You know, what breed of dog or cat is it? What's the age? What's the sex? We know that younger dogs are more prone to atopic disease. We know that older dogs perhaps more likely to get endocrine or neoplastic diseases. And of course, certain breeds get uh, problems. We, we know that uh, West Highland White Terriers and Basset Hounds are very prone to malassezia, which can then obviously lead to atopy as well. So it's, it's important to just take a little bit of time at the beginning to, to get some thoughts as to what the breed is and, and the age and the sex. It's always good to know familial history. If we know about the, the mum and dad when the people bought maybe the puppy, did they see the mum and dad? Were they in good condition? Um, if there's Demodex, in the family, then that may explain why the puppy's got Demodex as well. So really important that we, we know a little bit about family history. And also perhaps when the people acquired the dog or cat, did it immediately have the problem or did it come very soon after they acquired it? Maybe that means there may be a mite or a flea problem. Again, if the dog or the cat is pruritic, when did that problem start? Are, are the clients actually aware that the, the animal is pruritic? Sometimes, uh, quite commonly, I would see a cat that was obviously over grooming and would ask the question, you know, is your pet itchy? And they would say, no, it isn't. Is it always grooming itself? Oh, it's always keeping itself clean. You know, that may be a sign of pruritus and maybe a sign of flea allergy dermatitis. When you go to test that animal for fleas, you quite often come back with a negative flea comb test because of course the cat is removing the fleas with its own tongue. So important to try and work out, uh, you know, when the pruritus started, uh, how severe it is, what are the areas that the, that the dog or the cat are itching on? So a scabies dog will often be scratching at its elbows, at its ears, and on its, uh, on its ventrum as well. And in fact, you can often do this pinopedal reflex. A dog with, with scabies, if you scratch the end of its ear, it often starts to scratch itself. With itchiness, it's also important to see, is this a seasonal problem or does it happen all year round? If you see something that's very summer seasonal, it could well be that this is uh, a dog or a cat that has pollen allergies. If it obviously goes all year round, then it's much more likely to be uh, dust allergies and so on. Sometimes you may have a problem that is at first seasonal and then becomes more generalized. So getting a sense of is the, is the dog or the cat always bad or are the times when it is not so bad, it waxes and wanes. Sometimes an animal may go to kennels and because it's outside, the dust mites aren't as much of a problem and it will actually improve in those two weeks that it's been at kennels. Once it goes back into the centrally heated warm house with lots of dust mites and dust around, then the problem can recur. So questioning, quite close questioning on itchiness and, and its seasonality is also a really good idea. I always liked 
when I was examining my patients, particularly those pruritic patients, was to ask the client to give me their perspective of how itchy it was on a scale of one to 10. One being it never itches and 10 being it itches pretty incessantly. So a nine or a 10 makes me really suspicious of scabies, although it could be a severe allergy as well. But I wanted to get a sense of how itchy they felt the dog was because this was also helpful for the, the following consults where we could see was our treatment helping. And quite often in the early stages, my treatment wasn't steroids because clearly steroids would stop the itch, but they really cover the other problems. So it's very difficult to come to a diagnosis. It was also obviously an interesting question to know uh, who else was in the house? Were there other pets? Uh, obviously the, the humans that were in the house as well. Obviously, talking to the owners, if there were uh, lots of fleas around, they could be getting bitten on the ankles. But I remember seeing one um, Springer Spaniel case. It was two GPs. Uh, just because I sat down and, and asked the right questions, it was quite clear to me that the dog was itchy looking at it as I am, as I filled in my history sheet. But also when I asked them, have you got any itchy spots? They both had. They were young GPs, they'd not perhaps made that connection, but neither of the vets who'd referred the case to me. And just with the history, almost without touching the animal, I knew that this was an infectious parasitic problem. And I felt very confident that we would be able to sort the problem out. So finding out the other animals in the house, is there any sign of skin disease on them? Or in fact, humans in the house as well, is a really, really useful question to ask. Not a common problem, but certainly a problem that I think is important to look at, because if you don't, you never make the diagnosis and you miss that particular problem is food allergy or food intolerance. It's certainly out there, I would say five to 10% of itchy dogs um, will have a component of food allergy or food intolerance. And it's really important that we don't miss that because they can be really, really itchy dogs and cats. And if you control their food uh, allergy problem, then they will make a really, really good recovery. Clearly, sometimes with skin allergies, the problem has been a long seated one. They may have been to several vets before. Important to find out what medications have been used. So important to go to the vet and seek permission before you start treating, because this also gives you the advantage of getting all the treatment history so you don't have to go over old ground again. Uh, how often was flea treatment used? If steroids were used, did they stop the itch dead in its tracks or was the dog still itchy? So do get a full history of medication from a previous vet, or even if it's your own vet, sometimes these cases go between all of the vets and it just needs somebody sometimes to take a handle on it and spend some time studying the history. Finally, it's always important to get a sense of the general health of the dog or cat as well, because skin diseases can be an outward sign of an internal manifestation. Endocrine diseases, um, thymomas in cats can make cats go bald. So important to maybe ask the questions, is the dog drinking excessively, which it may do with Cushing's disease? Has he got diarrhea, which it may have with food allergy? So a, a general medical history is good. And then obviously following that up with a clinical examination that starts as a general clinical examination before you rush to look at the skin problem itself. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for listening. Do please leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Uh, if you've got any questions, I'm always happy to also try and answer them as well. Are you a member of the veterinary profession? If so, please do consider to sign up for my website, thewebinarvet.com, and also go and look at Wikivet, which is the veterinary encyclopedia, very much loved by students all around the world, but suitable for vets of all ages. Do go over <laughs> and have a look at the materials on there. If you've liked this video, please do click the like button. 
do go and look at other videos on the channel and uh, if you press the bell and subscribe and, and feel free to share this video uh, to WhatsApp or on social media with your friends as well. Uh, I, I love my dermatology and I hope it's been helpful in alleviating some dermatological problem for one of your patients. Thank you. Bye-bye.